All right, guys, welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Um, you know, I know I did one earlier, but I wanted to get done the 2020 draft class, the rookie breakdowns. Um, you know, I just wanted to finish this uh, little series up, um, and then tomorrow we can move on to the 2020 season and, you know, projections and predictions and stuff like that. Um, before we get into the video, if you are if you're new to the channel and are enjoying the content, consider liking the video, subscribing to the YouTube channel, and sharing with a Lions fan. Um, I'm trying to post a video once to twice a day, um, so if you're a Lions fan looking for Lions news or just an NFL fan, you know, wanted to watch something why there is no sports on, um, you know, consider subscribing and liking the video. Um, you know, it means a lot to me and I appreciate everybody that does so. But with that being said, let's get right into the last draft pick of the Detroit Lions, Jay Sean Cornell. Um, so Jay Sean Cornell was a senior uh, defensive lineman at Ohio State last year. Um, Jay Sean stands at 6'3", 284 pounds. Um, he was given a 5.43 grade by uh, NFL scouts, which roughly equates to a priority UDFA. Um, so this is the only guy um, that I think, well, based on the grade given by NFL scouts that the Lions um, reach for, um, you know, for per se. Um, you know, I don't know how much you can reach in the seventh round. Um, you know, I don't think it was that bad of a pick. I don't think that he was you know, a bad player. I'm not trying to say he's a bad player. Um, but you know, if you look at that and think, oh, we could have got him in free agency. Um, you know, look at who we got in UDFA. You got Hunter Bryant, who could have easily gone in the fourth round. Um, so we got a lot of value in UDFA. And I don't think that, you know, I even if he was there, I still don't think it was that bad of a pick for Jay Sean Cornell in the seventh round. Um, I think this was a good pick for the Detroit Lions. Um, and he, he was not invited to the combine. He was one of the you know, only Buckeyes to enter the NFL draft that was not invited to the Combine. So, you know, that might say something, but he just, he wasn't a big name, um, especially on the um, defensive line for Ohio State with Chase Young and Devon Hamilton. You know, that whole defensive line was pretty much stacked and, you know, he was kind of just a, another guy on the line. Um, he was, he wasn't a huge standout player, so I don't think that he got necessarily the recognition that he deserved. Um, you know, this guy was not a bad player, obviously he played a lot of snaps for Ohio State um, in his senior season in 2019. He played in 13 games, had 30 total tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, four sacks and a forced fumble. So obviously on a defensive line that features Chase Young, who had 16 and a half sacks and, you know, other guys that were drafted into the NFL, um, four and a four tack, uh, four sacks, seven and a half tackles for loss and a forced fumble are not bad stats by any means. Um, you know, I think this guy was overshadowed by Chase Young. I think he was overshadowed by the Bosa's. Um, you know, he was a good pass rusher to Ohio State, but he was never that genera well, generational talent that Ohio State brings out every year or every other year. Um, you know, he just wasn't that guy. Um, and you know, that's not necessarily a horrible thing. You know, not everybody can be a generational talent that comes out of Ohio State every year and goes top five in the NFL. Um, but I think he did his part for the Ohio State Buckeyes. I think that he helped, um, you know, draw some attention away from Chase Young because this guy was very talented at Ohio State. Um, you know, he ate up some blocks for Chase Young. He freed up guys to get open, um, you know, so I think that's a very valuable skill. And I think that he is a, a, a football player. I think that he is happy to do his part and contribute to the football team um, more than he is concerned about his personal stats. Um some of his pros, um, you know, he has athleticism to play both defensive tackle and defensive end, um, you know, which is uh, obviously Patricia and Bob Quinn look for versatility in defensive players. Um, it's something they really like. They like, they're trying to transition to that positionless defense where, you know, any guy can play any position on the field, can play any part of, you know, the defense that you need him to play. Um, you know, obviously you're not going to put a 300 pound defensive lineman at safety, but you want guys that can either play defensive end and defensive tackle. You want linebackers that can pass the rusher, uh, rush the passer, and cover. You want uh, safeties that can hit hard and force fumbles, but can also be ball hawks. I mean, you want guys that can do a lot of different things, and I think that's something that Jay Sean Cornell can do, and I think that is a reason that he will have a good opportunity to actually make the Detroit Lions even as a seventh-round draft pick. Um, he has a very good swim move. This is one of this is pretty much his bread and butter move. Um, you know, he's very good at the swim move. It's very clean. It's very, you know, precise. And I think that that's something that he has put a lot of work into and it shows because it is a very good swim move. 
Um, obviously, Chase Young had a better one. Obviously, Chase Young was much better than him, but I don't, I mean, I compared him a couple times with Chase Young, but I don't think it's really fair to compare some, any really pass rusher in this draft to Chase Young because that nobody would compare. Um, and, um, you know, kind of the last um, strength he has is he has a very high motor. Um, this guy is going to chase the quarterback. He's going to push relentlessly until the quarterback's on the ground or the, you know, the play is blown dead by the referees. Um, he's never going to give up on a play. He has the mindset that, you know, if the ball is still in play, he has the opportunity to make a play. Um, and I think that that is something that the Detroit Lions are going to really like. I think that that's a mindset. That's the culture they're trying to build is until the ball is dead, until the ref blows the whistle, keep playing, you know, keep pushing as hard as you can. And, you know, if you need a break, we can substitute you guys and rotate them around um, and keep everybody fresh. Um, and that's something you learn as an athlete very early. Um, but I think that that's kind of the culture that they're trying to build is work as hard as you can work and be relentless until the football is, you know, not in play anymore. Um, and that's just his mindset. And I think that's going to help him be likable. Um, I think that that is a trait that Matt Patricia is going to view very highly from Jay Sean. And I think that that could be a very high, you know, I think that could be a very strong reason why he might make the team. Um, you know, but that with that being said, he has some cons. Um, you know, why he is a pretty good pass rusher, he is not a great run stopper. Um, on the edge, he does a pretty good job of containing the run and pushing it back into, you know, the center of the defense. But when he's at that defensive tackle, he's not necessarily great at getting a, an, an initial push um, in the defensive line and getting, you know, the tackles behind the line on the running back and stopping the running back. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that he's horrible at it. I, I mean, it's not like he gets blown off the ball every single snap, um, but it's definitely something that he needs to work on if he wants to play more snaps in Detroit. Um, I don't think he'll play a lot of snaps in general, but I think he could be a situational rotational guy that you bring in for a couple snaps a game just to get some of your elite pass rushers, some of your starters rest, um, whether it's because you're winning the game or because it's, you know, right before halftime and they just need a break for a little bit or if there's an injury. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons that he might come in for some plays. And I think that, you know, if he wants to play more, I think that he needs to get much better as a run stopper. Um, he was more of a rotational guy in college. He was never that guy that was on the field, um, for every single snap, like Chase Young was. Um, he was never a Joey Bosa or a Nick Bosa, you know, none, he was never a guy that was on the field a hundred percent of the time for the defense, rushing the passer every single snap. Um, but I don't think that's what he's going to be in Detroit, unless obviously he has a breakout, like just absolutely dominates camp, which I wouldn't expect him to do. But you never know, there's breakout rookies every season, um, and maybe it's the Lions' turn to get one of those. But, um, you know, judging on what I've seen so far in tape and, you know, what I've heard from other people, um, you know, he's a rotational guy. He's not going to play a ton of snaps in Detroit, um, but he's going to be competition and he's going to be good depth for us um, if he does end up making the team. Um, and the last thing that's kind of big is he doesn't have the greatest hand use. Um, you know, he relies more on his athleticism and his athletic gifts to rush the passer more than his technique in his hands, um, which is what I think made the Bosa brothers and Chase Young elite is that they not only had the, that athleticism to, you know, beat everybody, but they had the technique down. They had the hand use, they had the bend, they had the dip, um, to get around, get around tackles and, you know, get a ton of crazy production for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, and I just don't think that Jay Sean Cornell was necessarily able to develop as a pass rusher, um, at Ohio State as well as those guys. Um, but as I said, um, you know, those are kind of his pros and cons, not a bad player, not a bad football player by any means. Obviously, if you're drafted to the NFL, you are the top 1%, um, of football players in America. Um, I'm giving this grade or I'm giving this pick a B grade. Um, again, I said in the John Penasini video, um, I think kind of for similar reasons, not necessarily that it wasn't a need, um, but just the fact that he probably won't play a ton his rookie season. Um, and if you draft a guy that probably won't play and might have even been there in undrafted free agency, um, you know, you can't give it too highly of a grade. Uh, but I also don't think that this was a waste of a pick. I don't think that this was poor value for the Detroit Lions. I think that this was um, a pick that 
they liked some, they saw something in Jay Sean Cornell's tape that they really liked and they wanted to bring him in and see if they can incorporate that into defense. And you know, if they can do that, obviously, um, you want to pick him when nobody else can versus waiting for you uh, undrafted free agency and letting him maybe walk um, and go somewhere else. So um, that's kind of my opinions for the Detroit Lions uh, draft. I think we had a very good draft overall. Um, I think that Jay Sean was a you know decent way to wrap up the draft. I think we had a very good draft all three days. Uh, I think this rookie class is going to be very impactful for us next season. Um, I think everybody can play. I just don't think that a lot of the later guys are going to get a ton of production, which is understandable. Which I mean, that is why they went in the later rounds is because they aren't polished prospects. They aren't the Chase Youngs, the Isaiah Simmons, the Jeffrey Okudas of the world. They're you know lower down they have certain skills that can be developed but they're just not elite at anything um so you know that's kind of my opinion um on Jay Sean Cornell I think he's a good pass rusher I don't think he's great I don't think that he'll play a ton in Detroit barring you know crazy injuries or you know anything like that um if you disagree with me let me know in the comments if you think we should have taken somebody else let me know in the comments um I'm very interested to hear what a lot of people think about this pick because personally I didn't know a whole lot about him um, you know, coming into the draft, I didn't know a lot about him when we drafted him. So, um, you know, if anybody has any insight, if anybody's an Ohio State fan and, you know, wants to let me know, you know, a little bit more about him, you know, if he brings something that I did not talk about to the Detroit Lions, I'd be very interested in knowing that. Um, but with that being said, that's all I got for you today. If there is Lions news before tomorrow, I will obviously make another video letting everybody know. Um, but if there is no Lions news, I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, that is all I have for today. I will not be making a third video. Um, but you know, I wanted to make a second one and get this out of the way so we could get onto something new tomorrow. Um, but that is all I got today. I will see everybody tomorrow. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.